Today I'm working on videos for you guys, and uh, one of the videos that I've been meaning to work on, and I just kind of keep shoving the, the notation around and just sort of working around it, I'm, I'm probably going to knock it off the list today. The notation says, people who make tools, weapons, and support gear for the industry typically don't understand how the self-defense industry actually works from a training aspect or even from a real-world aspect. Okay, that's knocked off the list. I'll give you an example uh, with this very weapon that I've got right here. The, the weapon that I have doesn't have anything Gucci on it. About the only Gucci thing that I've got here, and I really wouldn't even call it that, is the ALG Defense ACT trigger. Because to me, this trigger is lightning fast. The price point of this trigger at 65 bucks is duh. I mean, it's just, it's a price point that is like, why would you, why would you bother looking elsewhere? And the answer to that question is the Black Pearl effect. And the Black Pearl effect goes like this. And I, I'm, I'm going to try to remember the story as it was uh, relayed to me several years ago. Um, near the end of World War II, there was a gentleman in Hawaii who had been making, I think it's Luminox, but I can't remember if that's actually the brand name, but he was making the self-illuminating watches for aviators where you would basically flash it with light and it would hold light for hours on end. And, um, and he was, he, he knew that the government contracts were going to dry up because the world, world War II was, was spooling down. People had already begun to see it happening. And, um, the one thing that there was an abundance of was black pearls where he was in Hawaii. And he reached out to a friend, I believe in Manhattan. And he said to him, I'm going to send you some black pearls. I wish I could remember where I, where I read this. Either, either I read it in a book by, um, it's got to be Start With Why by Simon Sinek. I forget who was that I read this from. But anyways, he sent these black pearls to his friend in Manhattan. And he said, put them in the window of your, uh, of your um, jewelry store with a ridiculous price tag on them. What could it hurt? And he put them in, this guy got them, put them in the window, and they sold. And he contacts his friend, and he says, I need more black pearls. And they sold. And black pearls became a thing. All because someone put a redonkulous price tag and someone said, price tag is commensurate to quality, therefore I must have. And I often refer to things in this firearms industry of ours as black, the, the black pearl effect. I see people say, oh, well, I've got, you know, this and I've got that because it's this and that and it's awesome and it's going to blah, blah, blah. But in reality, there's so very little in this industry that's going to really do anything for you. My personal upper receivers for my guns are almost always Anderson manufacturing um, uh, these uh, lightweight uppers that I use. Recently I built something for a client who requested a $250 upper receiver. The upper by itself was $250. This upper is $39. And his $250 upper receiver, guys, I really wish I was making this up. The $250 upper receiver from a manufacturer who will remain unnamed, out of respect, had tool marks on it that were so blatant that it wasn't that it was a style thing. It was a lack of effort to actually bead blast the item before it had been anodized. And when I say tool marks, I mean every single one of these passes right here had a very distinct line of tool marks. The, the brass deflector, distinct line of tool marks. Across the top, tool marks. Across the left side, tool marks. I kept seeing tool marks inside and out on a $250 upper receiver. And yet a, a 40, you know, $39, $40 upper receiver from Anderson Manufacturing, no tool marks anywhere. Smooth as butter, anodizing that's consistent. I got to the point years ago in this industry where I said, I'm either gonna have a Ferrari by name or I'm gonna have a Ferrari by performance because I can't afford a Ferrari by name. And I walked away from having things handed to me, and I started building for myself. And in doing so, I got to the point where I realized, well, if this manufacturer's logo isn't on that item, what do I really care? I'm here for the performance. So once I understood that, I said, okay, so this is not as desirable to me as this is. And I'll just give you just basic numbers. This $300 item, is not as desirable to me as the $50 item. Even though the $300 item may offer me 
a modicum more of performance or fit or finish or whatever on that part versus the $50 item. But the $50 item suits my needs just fine. Um, actually, yeah, this is a great example. Yeah, these are, these are my bolt carrier groups. When I say my, meaning the bolt carrier groups that I buy. Um, I wish I could tell you the manufacturer who is also buying their bolt carrier groups from the same people that I'm buying my bolt carrier groups from, but the person who told me would, would disown me if I did. It's a big name manufacturer in this industry that gets their BCGs from the pla same place I get my BCGs from. The only difference is their BCGs have their logo and their name on it. Mine have nothing on it because it costs to actually have a logo put on a bolt carrier group. And for those of you who are my customers, either I'm going to spend money to add a bunch of markings on things and pass that on to you because look, if you think that manufacturers absorb cost of production out of pocket, you're deluding yourself. Everything that is put onto a gun, you're paying for, which is why those of you who have bought comps from me know that when you receive them, you get them rolled in copy paper. It's basically the bottom half of your shipping label is what I'm rolling your comp in and I take a little piece of Ranger Band, which is nothing but inner tube, and I snip it and I wrap your comp in it and I drop it in the package because if you're anything like me when you receive anything in the mail you rip it out of its packaging you put it on the gun you're going to use it on and you go get to work with it and the box goes in the corner or goes in the trash can so what do I care I had to get to the point in this industry where I had to look at what is real versus what is hype and I'm glad to say that I have completely disassociated myself from everything that is hype. And the great example that I'm going to give you here, and I'm going to leave you with this, is I want to say seven or eight years ago, it may even be more, I went to this obscure company called Ballistic Advantage. Purely because my friend Clint Hansen had gone from the manufacturer where he used to work and had gone to work for Ballistic Advantage. And he had told me, and this guy went with me, and this guy went with me. And I went, oh. Okay, well then, I'm going to. And I went to Ballistic Advantage. And guys, no one knew who they were back then. I'd like to say that I played a little tiny part in getting the name out for Ballistic Advantage. Um, and I did. Um, but what I'm, the reason I'm sharing this with you is, I went to them and I basically said, I'm here for the performance. I don't really care about the name. I'm here for their performance. Now Ballistic Advantage is known across the entire industry. You say Ballistic Advantage and people are like, yeah! But you know what? It's because Ballistic Advantage, the reason I say I had a little part to do in their success is because then as a magazine writer, I, I got the word out, right? But you can get the word out about a product, but if the manufacturer is putting out consistent crap, eventually it doesn't matter how many times the, man, the magazines try to polish that turd. If it's a turd, it's a turd. Ballistic Advantage is not putting out turds. They're putting out rock solid product that works. And which is why I build with Ballistic Advantage across the board. I build with, uh, what is it, 7.5, 10.3, I'm getting ready to offer 11.3 again, um, and 14.5. I, I like Ballistic Advantage barrels. I've been building with them for years. That's the point of this. I got to the point where I realized I can either go for the name brand weapon or I can source my own products, my own components, and build it myself. And when I hear customers say, well, you know what, I like my Daniel Defense, or I like my this, or I like my that. And I think to myself, you don't realize that rifle that you think is from one manufacturer isn't from one manufacturer. All of those components have their name on it for them, have been put on it for them. They did final assembly and testing and they sent it to you. But just because every component on that gun has your favorite manufacturer's name doesn't mean that they built it. Their gun is just as Heinz 57 as my gun is. There's a reason that I use Magpul furniture. Why? Because I realized that the trend in the industry was have your own furniture made with your own name on it so you can get around paying for rock solid Magpul furniture for your weapon. Or what I do, I just offer Magpul furniture on my weapons. If you want a weapon from me, I'm not giving you an option for anything else because I'm tired of dealing with other manufacturers. I want to build with products that actually go onto the gun correctly and serve my customer for an extended lifetime you know, for the lifetime of the weapon, because my warranties are pretty much, you own it, I'm covering it. Um, so anyways, um, I know I've kind of 
rambled on this video, but there are things that I'm seeing and there are patterns that I'm seeing in this industry that are just wearing me out. And, and I, because I'm constantly communicating with customers, trying to get people off of adding expensive things to the rifles, I share this with you guys. Um, I, I ask you, if you're interested in learning what is good, then ask me and I will, I will sell you only products that are good products that I believe in. If it's something I don't believe in, it's not going to be on my website. It's that simple. If it's there, it's because I believe in it. As always, I thank you guys for watching. God bless you all. Get those guns out in practice. Have a good one.